Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. We have reached the end of Cobra Convergence. Thank you to everyone who presented Cobra Convergence content this year, and thank you to everyone who followed the calendar on hcc788.com. For the last day of Cobra Convergence 7, let's take a look back at the amazing things we've seen this month. I would, I would definitely say that the, uh, the siblings would have a better chance at uh, taking down the Renegades than the Dreadnoughts themselves. And I like the Dreadnoughts, Ryan. <laughs> I like the Dreadnoughts. Uh, I'm just saying that there are any, any, any three combinations of the regular Dreadnought, uh, I don't think, except you know maybe, maybe Road Pig would, would be a tough one. But I don't think any three combination is, is as strong as this three here. Now, before the Terror Drone was released, Cobra did have a couple of other bases to speak of. The first initial base was the Sears and Roebuck 1982 Missile Command Center. This was a cardboard type base, which is actually pretty rare to acquire complete these days. And then there were some mini bases, like the 1985 Cobra Bunker. And then they had the Surveillance Port, which was actually released in 1986. This could be used for a rallying point for the Cobra troops. This is the Saw Viper, Cobra's heavy machine gunner from 1990. This figure was released in 1990 and was only available in 1990. It was discontinued for 1991. This is the only vintage version of the Saw Viper. Alrighty, last round. Johnson Henderson. <laughs> Anderson, I saw that. Hey there, friends and fellow G.I. Joe enthusiasts. It's Chad. Today, as part of Cobra Conversion 7, I have the privilege of discussing that master of intelligence and espionage, the Baroness. Let's get into it. That guy died. I don't care how many times we saw parachutes. That guy just died. Look, we saw the vipers. We saw him bust out of there, but you know he's just fallen to his doom. <laughs> or it was his corpse falling out of the chair. I don't know. Was that ripcord with a jump pack on? It was. Yes. He had to be so goddamn confused. But of course, he's got his red uniform with his leopard skin. Patches around it with his red disco medallion. Going to go catch up with the Baroness, I suppose. Have his rendezvous with the Baroness. They'll ever make an agent faces or scoop and classified. Do you ever think there's a chance? I know the whole never say never, but realistically. Man, I would say if this if this line lasts down the line, maybe a three or more years, maybe. We got so much awesome characters to to keep going i wouldn't go this deep for a long time to be honest with you it was the original one it was a desert one it was the tiger force one there was the cobra stinger there was a dreadnought one there was mail aways there was variants but what never happened was cobra commander didn't get his own specific band so today Cobra Conversion 7, we are going to write that wrong. Storm Shadow was a series that was created at Devil's Due and featured the writing of Larry Hama returning to a G.I. Joe book again. This one would be quite a bit different though. It wouldn't feature the G.I. Joe cast that we have grown used to, but instead would be a narrow spotlight on Storm Shadow and some new characters. This series would introduce some things that would later come up again in the IDW Real American Hero books.
So I think what we're going to be getting for mole rats are these figures that we're seeing with some sort of alternate zombie head or arms, you know, like make it, you can kind of make a zombie out of it, if you know what I mean. That's what I think we're going to get. Or it's a mole rat and it's already zombified. What do you think about that idea? It could, it could also be Shaun of the Dead just woken up. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a closer look at Destro. So this figure came out in 1983, and I got this figure in 1983. Not this exact one, but a copy of this figure back when it was released. I remember getting it. I believe I was sick at the time, and uh, my brother and my father had come home, and they had a Destro for me to help me feel better, which did. So really cool to have this guy in my collection. Um, let's take a look at the pilot first. Wild Weasel. Oh, he really stands out. Uh, very cool action figure. Call me Codename Cujo. You may remember me from such endless international toy scuttlebutt as the G.I. Joe Bird podcast or my catalog of peerless community interviews where I interviewed the artist and the occult. But it was on that journey that I scraped the ceiling. The truths I uncovered too esoteric for the mainstream. I may have gone insane, so join me on this journey to see what the hell happened. Meet the Battle Hornet. This vehicle was released in 2004 with all original parts. And for a small vehicle, that sure is a lot to take in. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at this Copperhead action figure. Why? Because he's Cobra related and because I just got him from Hasbro Pulse in the mail two days ago. So I was saving him for Cobra Convergence. Seven. What I'm going to do is like in all my videos, we're going to take him over to the photo booth, we're going to break down the package, we're going to break down the figure, and we're going to talk all about Copperhead. Agent Faces was released in 2003 as part of the Spy Troops line. This was during the New Sculpt era of G.I. Joe. His version 1 figure was a New Sculpt figure, while his version 2 figure, which was a mail away, used the O-ring design. Batman is part of the DEF subset line. Now, you guys know I've talked quite a bit about how much I love the different subsets. There's more than just G.I. Joe and Cobra in the original 82 to 94 Joes. In keeping with the theme of this year's convergence of spies and saboteurs, I chose a vehicle from the G.I. Joe spy troops line. I mean, it literally says spy in the toy line, so it is part of the theme by default. Really, before I start in going into what's going on in my life of collecting. Needless to say, the O-ring based three and three quarter inch scale movement was on, and there was no stopping G.I. Joe from being at the top of the hearts and minds of young children. With that, let's have a look at the sophomore year of this amazing military-based toy franchise as we watch our favorite real American hero fight for freedom over land and air against a certain ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. Today we're going to take a look at some leader characters and a depraved overlord who oversees another of Dr. Mindbender's genetic experiments. Today we're going to find out who Venomous Maximus is. Dr. Mindbender has had many evil, vile plots and schemes over the decades. That did it. Alright, Snake. Go get him. The monster is still so much bigger than Snake Eyes. This isn't looking good. But Snake Eyes is a master of combat. When we served together in Vietnam, I learned to never count Snake Eyes out. He'll find a way. I see Thrasher and the Thunder Machine, and get your Googles ready, because not everybody may know this. I'm not trying to sound all cool here. I literally just sit on toy websites all day. Uh... Tonka 
had a toy line called Steel Monsters that is one of the coolest, most below-the-radar toy lines ever. I didn't even remember it until like a few years ago. All right, so let's talk about Team Cobra then. You know, I look at Cobra, and Cobra comes in two flavors. The troops that are the zealots, they are the ones that bought in, believed the hype, the fear-mongering, and the propaganda of Cobra Commander, the used car salesman, demagogue, rabble rouser. The, the, every, the everyman. The everyman. And then there's the top line, all the named characters. And a lot of the named characters aren't technically Cobra. They're hired by Cobra. Also deeper in encrypted file, found blueprints for the vamp. Clutch is not going to be happy about that. They even had information about the devilfish that I arrived at Cobra Island on. Hopefully they aren't on to me as well. But it's not all bad news. Got information on the high-speed sentry, Hiss. The Hiss tanks should be arriving on the continental United States very shortly. As head of Mars, the Military Armament Research Syndicate, he is the leading supplier of weaponry throughout the world. However, he is also known by another name, one that has imposed his will across generations and nations. Destro international terrorist, and Scottish nobleman. <laughs> Good evening, David. So this year, my contribution is to take a look at three of the most wackiest, craziest, bankruptcy-inducing schemes that Cobra has come up with over the years within the G.I. Joe cartoon series. bit more about the Sky Commandos. The gimmick for them was that they came with a glider. So, um, you know, you could basically pop your figure on there and plug him in on the bottom and then just throw him around the backyard or down at the local park or wherever you saw fit. It's testing a new railgun design. Something went wrong. My team was dead. Shrapnel had severed my spine. I crawled a few dozen yards before I blacked out. And woke up like this. An invalid in a chair. I can't live like this any longer. This ends today. Welcome to Hornet City. Hey, you look lost, big guy. But don't worry, we are friends here. Is, is that a cobra insignia on your chest? Of course it is, you fool. I am Cobra Commander. Here comes those awful Cobra minifigs. Oh, uh, well. Good luck, mister. Firefly, I order you to- ah! Very cool packaging. So on the side here, you have the symbols uh, that you could look up online. Number 31 in the line, and here is the, the typical poster. Uh, like I said, I haven't looked at this physically, so it's still sealed. Like the cover for the window is still sealed here. I haven't looked at it, and I've been saving it for a while right now. And I thought this would be very uh, a good idea to do this for Cobra Convergence. I remember being an eight-year-old kid, and during this time, we would get cartoons for uh, the Marvel G.I. Joe comic. 
And when I saw the Zartan one, of course, where he pulls his that disguise off of him and then he changes colors and, you know, the announcer talks about, you know, be on the lookout for Zartan in the next issue of G.I. Joe comic and all the mayhem and destruction that he caused. I just knew this was one character that automatically fell in love with. G.I. Joe was released in Japan in 1986. Unfortunately, it only lasted one wave. The 1986 release of G.I. Joe in Japan included Hasbro figures which were released between the years 1983 and 1985, i.e. the first three waves. There were a mixture of vehicles and also carded figures. In total, there were 24 individual carded figures released by Takara, 13 unlucky G.I. Joes, and 11 Cobra. at the book take a look at the cover for gi joe cobra from 2009 if i'm not mistaken all the covers for gi joe cobra are done by howard shaken howard shaken of course is known for doing numerous years of work he did a lot of uh original run stuff for the marvel star wars run which i'm sure jaron is familiar with he did um several covers for ID, the regular idw gi joe book as well like the primary covers he, he's a really nice guy. I met him and I had him sign one of the IDW covers. He was he's a very uh, energetic guy. He's got a lot of he's got a lot of character. GI Joe has somehow managed to infiltrate our impenetrable command center. Find the skirking coward and bring him to me, so that I may test his metal and wits in my dungeon of deathly doom. <laughs> Commander, we really should just shoot him on sight, instead of committing to some overly complicated murder maze. Every time we do that, it just gives the Joes more time to send a rescue party and save them. Basically, uh, Cobra has taken over the world, and G.I. Joe is now a small... Um, cell that's underground like basically they're freedom fighters and they're not they're using the same names um, that we all are familiar with but the characters are completely different um, as far as their backstory and how they came to be the opening sequence of this uh 10 10 issue story arc 10 issue story arc with duke being assassinated by major blood at point blank Definitely gets your attention. Yeah, end of June 2003, at JoeCon, they revealed a three-pack. It was going to be called Infiltrate Cobra Island, and it was a Crimson Guard three-pack. But if you looked at it, you could clearly tell that none of them were Crimson Guards. They were all G.I. Joe members in disguise. It had an approximate retail price of $9.99. So for $10 three brand new Crimson Guards right after the drought of no Crimson Guards. Yeah, we both take two very different approaches on stuff. Yeah, I'm influenced by the comics a lot and the cartoons, more so than the toys. I mean, I love the toys, don't get me wrong. Yeah, especially the comics. Love the comic books. Well, I guess we'll just jump right into it and then... Uh... Anything at the end, we'll just add on. All right, and our list is? Top 10 most unlikely spies. We, we think would make the worst spies for Cobra. What we do here at Plastic Profiles is review a classic G.I. Joe figure and its file card and then compare it to a more modern interpretation to determine which of the two best represents that character. Yeah. And today, Storm Shadow. So excited. I have been hyped about this figure. That's the 
that's not all the Cobra Convergence content we got this month. I asked everyone to join the Convergence and make their own Cobra creation, and many of you got involved. We will see you all again next year when we converge again. Until then, remember, only Cobra is Cobra.